On this episode of Hackbyte, we're going to explore aerial Wi-Fi reconnaissance data using Python. War driving is a Wi-Fi reconnaissance technique that lets you map the physical location of Wi-Fi devices around you, typically in a car, by foot, or even on a skateboard. War driving makes it easy to build a list of vulnerable Wi-Fi devices and networks. And for as cheap as $15, you can build yourself one of these bad boys that allows you to gather reconnaissance using an ESP8266 Wi-Fi microcontroller, GPS module, and a couple other hardware components. In previous episodes, we took a look at building one of these rigs from scratch and also analyzed for driving data gathered from the ESP8266 using a Python data visualization tool called Jupyter Notebook. But to take this a step further, we wanted to see how well this war driving rig would perform for gathering aerial Wi-Fi reconnaissance data. So on a random vacation trip in Missoula, Cody and I soldered together the raw components from the ESP8266 war driving rig and strapped it to the bottom of his drone, then set out on an aerial reconnaissance flight. As a simple experiment, Cody had my friend Christian and I set up two Wi-Fi access points on our phones to see if they could be precisely detected and located from the air. On this episode, we're gonna dive deeper into analyzing war driving data through Python and visualize the results of our experiment through Jupyter Notebook. To follow along with today's video, all you're gonna need is a computer with a web browser and also the war flying data set that you can download from the link in the description below. This video was sponsored by PCBWay, who offers amazing PCB manufacturing to quickly and easily bring your PCB projects to life. Check out PCBWay.com to learn more about their PCB, 3D printing, and CNC services. So this is the raw data that was generated from the war driving rig, and you can download this as a CSV file from my GitHub repository, which you can find over at github.com slash alexlind slash ESP8266 war driving. So you can find both that data set and also the Jupyter Notebook script we're gonna be using today, which you can find under the Jupyter Notebook scripts folder. Now, once you're here, you can just go ahead and click on the following Python notebook file, which is Missoula Warflight 0821 2021. And then you can go ahead and just click on the open in collab badge near the top of the page. So this should open you up in a Google collaboratory runtime session. And in order to get started with this script, all you have to do is just import the data set we're gonna be working with by clicking on this folder icon and then uploading a file that you have on your computer locally. So of course, I'm gonna go with the Missoula Warflight.csv um, file. And once this uploads to our runtime session, we're ready to start parsing and cleaning the data. So as you can see, this is uploaded to our runtime session. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the actual Jupyter Notebook. So in this first cell here, we start by importing the CSV file by using a data parsing library called pandas. And after importing the CSV file, you can see that we have detected a little over 5,200 different Wi-Fi networks over the course of our war flying session. Now, some of these networks were detected before we actually took off and also after the drone landed, so this probably contains a lot of extraneous data that we don't want to include in our actual experiment. So in order to filter out this extraneous data, in the following code cell, I've added the following time threshold here that allows us to use a pandas function to sort out data that was spotted outside of the following time boundary. So if any Wi-Fi access points were detected before the drone actually took off, or after the drone landed, then we go ahead and just delete this data from our data set. So after running this code cell, you can see we come down to just under 2000 Wi-Fi access point entries with a total of 341 unique Wi-Fi networks. Pandas makes it really easy for us to organize and clean data, as well as visualize the raw information that we were able to capture on these wireless devices. For example, their signal strength encryption or even GPS coordinates. Being able to physically correlate this data with pinpoints on a map will allow us to better visualize the information we captured, as well as determine the location of vulnerable Wi-Fi devices or other interesting Wi-Fi anomalies. Using a mapping library called Folium and also some other built-in features like markers and marker clusters, I was able to create the following map that allows us to see the density of Wi-Fi networks in general geographical vicinities. So you can see by zooming in on some of these clusters, we're able to see the density of Wi-Fi networks in these areas and also information about them just by clicking on one of the clusters and selecting any of these points to view information about these networks, which in this case you can see will yield their SSID. So Folia makes it really easy to create feature maps like this and also visualize geographical data. 
Now, in order to create this map, all I had to do was simply import the data set we generated from the previous code cell and construct a map viewing area that simply fits all of our data points into view by averaging the latitude and longitude of all the spotted Wi-Fi access points. Now, after constructing the viewing area, we can go ahead and visualize data by calling different functions from the Folium library. You can see that the first function I use is the following polyline function, which I use to simply plot out our war flying route by grabbing the latitude and longitude of every single Wi-Fi network that was spotted within our data set, and then just drawing a line between them. Now you can see I also iterate over every network that was spotted within our data set, and then simply just append all of these data points to the following cluster object, which is a built-in feature from Folium that allows us to group um, certain markers by a characteristic, which in this case would be their geographical location. So Folium automatically handles this for us, and just by appending it to the following network cluster and overlaying this on top of our map, you can see we're able to get an idea of what Wi-Fi networks were spotted within certain geographical bounds. And we can also click on them to view information, which in this case I have set to their SSIDs. Now, finally, you can also see that I appended the following two markers to the map, which grab the first and last entry from our data set, which will let us see both the takeoff and also landing point of our drone. Now, taking a look at the map here, you can see that I assigned the following color-coded icons to the takeoff and landing location. And you might notice that this is quite a bit a ways from where we actually took off, since Cody's drone died in a random field before we were able to actually recover it. You can see that this map gives us a basic overview of visualizing geographical data through Folium. For instance, through letting us plot our war driving route and overlaying various interesting data points on it. Now, with some simple modification and data parsing, we can harness these visualization features in order to create a customized map targeting specific Wi-Fi devices or even other interesting feature-specific map types, like a generic heat map depicting network density. In order to target and plot specific Wi-Fi devices, I set up the following known device list that allows us to target devices with known Wi-Fi access point names, which in our case is Target3 and Bingus Mobile, which would be the names of the networks that Christian and I set up on our phones. Now, in order to plot this on our map, all I had to do was simply iterate over every network detected from our data set and create a marker for networks where the SSID is equal to any of these known device values. So taking a look at the map here, you can see that we spot target three in the exact geographical location that Christian set up his phone at. But if you take a look at Bingus Mobile, you might notice that we spot this in two different distinct geographical locations, which is because Cody didn't give me enough time to run into position before noticing that his drone was low on battery. Taking a look at the drone footage, you can actually see me start to run into position in the corner of the video, where we detected the first instance of the Bingus mobile network, as Cody was first taking off. Now, after flying a little further out, you can see me standing underneath this bridge at my designated location, which is almost exactly where we detected the second instance on the Folium map. After making a loop around the park, we detect the second Wi-Fi network, Target 3, at around 6.45 UTC, where you can also see Christian walking on a trail, precisely where his phone was detected in the script. In the final map from this visualization demo, we're going to take a look at a feature that makes it easy for us to separate data into different layers on a map, and see how we can use this in order to visualize Wi-Fi security in the areas that we flew over. Using a function called Feature Group, we're able to group together geographical coordinates by attribute. And in this case, I'm using this in order to group together different Wi-Fi networks by their encryption standards. So you can see that I've created a different feature group to correspond with web networks, WPA, WPA2, and networks that are otherwise open or unsecured. In order to add individual networks to these different feature groups, we can sort through our data set for each individual network, take a look at the encryption type that it's using, and then go ahead and add it to the appropriate encryption type feature group with a unique corresponding color marker. Now, after generating these different feature groups, we can go ahead and just add them all to our encryption map. And taking a look at the rendered Folium map, you can see that we have the following layer control option in the top right corner that makes it really easy for us to create visual distinction between the different types of data that we picked up along our route. Now, taking a look at WEP networks, you can see that we have three instances of this encryption type detected, which is pretty good since WEP is a pretty archaic standard that's fairly easy to crack. Now, taking a look at WPA, 
you can see that we have a single sad instance of this encryption tech detected. But if we look at its successor, which is WPA2, you'll notice that this is by far the most prevalent encryption type that was detected along our wharf line path, followed closely by open and unsecured Wi-Fi networks. Today, we use Python libraries like Folium for more advanced Wi-Fi reconnaissance techniques, and we're able to create a custom map showing us the exact location of the two test Wi-Fi networks that we set up. In just a three-minute flight, we were able to log around 2,000 Wi-Fi networks, which is about five entries per second. And while this only shows us Wi-Fi access points and not client devices, we'll take a look at implementing that functionality in future videos, possibly featuring the Wi-Fi Nugget. If you enjoyed today's video and want to help support the channel, you can check out our web store over at hackhat.com and pick up a Wi-Fi Nugget to follow along with future Wi-Fi hacking related episodes. If you have any suggestions for upcoming videos or topics you want to see covered on the channel, feel free to drop a comment below or reach out to me on Twitter at AlexLind. As always, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time on Hack5. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and pen test products at hack5.org. On today's episode of Hackbyte, we're going to explore aerial Wi-Fi reconnaissance data using Python. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that was so cool.